Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the number of work days, business days, between any two dates in Microsoft Access, very similar to Excel's network days function. Today's question comes from Anton in Buena Park, California, one of my Platinum members. Anton says, I'm in the process of switching everything over from Excel to Access. Good for you. One function that it seems like Access doesn't have is Excel's Network Days function. I use that a lot for calculating the number of business days between two dates. How can I do this in Access? Well, Anton, it's not surprising that Access doesn't have a function that Excel does. Excel is the golden child of Microsoft, and Access is the redheaded stepchild. Access doesn't get half the stuff that Excel does, and it really should. Now, there is a way if you have both access and excel on your computer to to utilize excel's functions with vba however i don't like doing that number one reason why is because if you're planning on sharing your database at all in the future using the free runtime and someone who you're sharing your database with doesn't have excel then your functions won't work so with a little bit of programming we can mimic that network days function in access with a little bit of vba that's right, folks. Got to know some VBA for this one. Now, VBA isn't scary. Don't let it scare you, okay? I've got a 20-minute introductory video. It's absolutely free. It's on my YouTube channel. It's on my website. There's the link right there, or you'll find it down below in the links section. Go click on it. If you haven't programmed with VBA before, don't be worried. I'll show you everything you need to know. Go watch this first. Once you learn just a little bit of VBA programming, your access databases can get a lot more powerful. So go watch this first if you've never done programming before. Don't be scared of it. We really only need about six lines of code to do this. Okay, so it's not hard. You just got to know where to put those six lines of code. And I'm going to show you in just a few minutes. But first, let's take a trip over to my good buddy, Excel. Access is my best friend. Excel's a good buddy. All right, and let's say you've got a list of dates and you want to see how many work days, how many business days there are between those two dates. Let's see how Excel does it. So here, let's say I got a start date and an end date. Okay, and I'll put in here 1122 and then 2122. And then let's do this week too. All right, today is January 27th. So let's go 123.22 to 130.22, which is Sunday to Sunday. Okay. Now here, we want to put how many business days there are between those. All right, so we use the network days function. Why is it network days? Well, it's net work days, not network days. That's what I thought when I first saw it. I'm like, what are network days? <laughs> so it's equals network days. And there's network days international, which allows you to change, like, because some countries, I guess, they have different days of the week that are considered not work days. I don't know. But network days is the one we want to use. So network days. Okay, there's three bits of information. Two of them are required. Start date and end date. All right, so start date is there, comma, and end date is there. All right, close parentheses up and hit enter. And there's a number of work days between those two dates. Auto fill it down. And there you go. So between January 1st and February 1st, there's 22 work days. That is days between Monday and Friday. All right. Yeah, I'll take, I'll take Excel's word for that one. Here, the 23rd to the 30th, that's a Sunday to Sunday. So there's five days, right? The Monday through Friday between those two dates. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now that third parameter is holidays. That's for things that you can't calculate as Monday through Friday. Let's say you got a list of company holidays, right? So holidays over here, all right? Let's say that, um, you know, you can put December 25th in there for Christmas or 1-1 for New Year's Day. Just to show you, let's put uh, 126-22 in there and 127-22. Let's say those are company retreat days or whatever, okay? If I came over here, and using that third parameter, I went comma, and then I picked my holidays range right there. I'm going to hit F4, so it's an absolute reference. Okay, that, mean, that means that box doesn't change as I autofill down. I cover that in my Excel classes, folks. All right, press enter. And now you can see that those two days are now taken out of that range. Because that's the Wednesday and Thursday between those two Sundays. So now there's only three work days. That's what the holidays list is. This is a little bit harder to approximate in access i will show how to do this in the extended cut for the members but for the rest of us let's see how we can do just this part with some vba 
Okay, so let's say goodbye to Excel for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, good friend. And now we'll go over to my best friend, which is Access. All right? Access has my love. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a table first with our dates in it. So let's go create table design because we don't get spreadsheet type stuff in here, right? So let's just make a date, a table of dates. It doesn't, it could be anything you want. All right, I'll just throw an ID in here. All right, we'll call this, uh, we'll call this date, uh, start, let's call start date as a date and end date as a date. All right, save this as my date T. All right, it's my date table. There we go. And let's just throw some dates in here. Again, I'll go to one to, uh, actually I did one, one to two, one, right? And then I did uh, 123 to 130. All right, we'll do the same dates here that we had over in Excel. All right, so close this. Now we need our function. So how do we do our function? Now, if you've watched intro to VBA, you know how to create this. All right, so we're gonna go to create module. We're gonna make our own module. Here's the VBA editor. Okay, now in, in intro to VBI, I didn't cover how to create your own function. So we're going to make a function that's going to take some information in and return a value. Okay, so it's going to be public. That means anyone can use it. Function, different from a sub, right? A sub just does something. A function returns a value. We're going to call this my network days. I put the my in front of there so it doesn't conflict if you actually have a network days function. We're taking two bits of information, a start date as a date and an end date as a date. So it's taking two bits of information in and it's going to return a number. So it's as long, okay? This is what it's going to be returning, a long, a long integer, a number value, okay? Now what we're gonna do in here is we're gonna start at the start date and we're going to loop until we get to the end date. And we're gonna count up the number of days that are Monday through Friday in that loop. Okay, now you might think that looping like this might be slow. Yeah, it's it, it's it's not. I mean, I tried a, a test of this going from like one one nineteen hundred to one one twenty one hundred, and it's a fraction of a second. But if you've got thousands of records using this, it might be a little slow. But generally, you're not running this on thousands of records. You only run it in a, a few dozen records at a time. Okay, if speed is an issue, talk to me. Maybe there's a better solution, but this works fine for me. I've been using this function for years, no problems whatsoever. So we're gonna do a little loop in here. So we're gonna dim D as a date. That's a temporary date value that we're gonna use just to count up, right? We're gonna start at one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, and just count up. Okay, Oops, someone's beaming in. Okay, now we're gonna start our count at zero. Net, uh, my network days equals zero. I don't have any yet. All right, we're going to start at zero and then count up. We're going to say D equals start date. So start the loop at whatever the start date is, January 1st, let's say. Okay, while loop, ready? While D is less than the end date. We're going to loop and while end down there at the end. That says while D is less than the end date, loop, all right, run the loop. And inside the loop, make sure you say D equals D plus one. That's where it increments the D value. So it's going to go... January 1st, add one. January 2nd, add two. January 3rd, add, and, and, and so every time it loops, it's gonna say, are you less than the end date? Are you less than the end date? Okay, all right, I'm gonna keep going until it hits the end date. Now, inside here, we're gonna check to see if the day of the week is Monday through Friday. We're gonna use the weekday function, okay, weekday. And the weekday returns a value from one to seven. One is Sunday and seven is Saturday, right? So Monday through Friday is going to be two through six. So all we have to say is if weekday, weekday of D, the temporary date, is greater than one and weekday of D is less than seven, then my net work days equals my net work days plus one. And if. That could be one line of code. I said, we, I said we needed six lines of code. This could just be one line of code if you don't use the end if, which we really don't need it. So here, we'll do this. We'll get rid of that. We'll go like that and get rid of the end if. So that makes it less lines of code, right? I don't want to scare people with 18,000 lines of code. One, two, three, four, five, six. You technically don't need the dim D as date if you don't have option explicit up here. That's another class altogether. Don't worry about it. All right, so as you can see, not a very complicated function. That's all we, that's, that's it. That's all we need to, to just count the Monday through Fridays between two dates. All right, save it. 
I'm going to call this my global module. If you only have one module in your database for all these little helper functions, I just call it my global mod. That's just what I call it. Hit enter. Okay, so now I've got a function called my network days that I can use in my database. Where can we use that? We can use it in a form. We could use it in a report. You could throw it in a query. All right, let's make a query for it. But first, a word from our sponsor, and that's me. I'm the sponsor. If you want to learn a lot more about this kind of stuff, Access Expert 27 and 28, I cover lots of different date time functions, and I have a date time seminar as well. All right, Access Expert level 27, we got all these different date functions in here, including date and time mathematics, two year 2030 problem, a list of upcoming birthdays, aged accounts receivable, displaying times in different formats, time sheets that go over midnight, all kinds of stuff. And in 28, I cover all the different date add, date diff, date part, date serial, all those functions, displaying ordinals, first, second, third, all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, there's my date time seminar, which goes over all kinds. I, I am not even, I can't even start with the date time seminar. There's so much stuff in this seminar. Okay. And if you really like this VBA programming stuff, guess what? I got 35 plus levels of different developer classes for you. Lots, lots to learn. Okay. All right, so back to our regularly scheduled program. Let's make a query to use the my network dates function. So we're going to go over here, query design. We're going to bring in um, that date table. Okay, we got our start date, end date. Don't need the ID in here. All right, let's say X is going to be the number of days between those two dates. Business days, right? So my network days, open parentheses, start date. It's going to use the start date field right there, comma, end date. The fact that start date and end date are called that in here are meaningless. All right, you could name these something different here if you want to. This could be like customer birth date or something like that. These field names don't have to be the same. Okay, run the query, and there you go. All right, 21 days there, five days there. And that is how you calculate the number of business days between two dates. Now, again, like I said, this doesn't include holidays, which there's static holidays and there's floating holidays. So for static holidays, you can actually put them in this function, right? You can, you can take out, uh, you know, uh, Independence Day. You could take out MLK Day. You could take out, um, you know, Christmas, all the dates that are the same date throughout the year. Then you got floating holidays, which might change, right? Labor Day, Memorial Day, those kind of things, Thanksgiving Day. So that we can make a little table for that. And you can put those in each year, what they fall on. All right. We're going to cover that in the extended cut for the members. So if you want to learn more in the extended cut for the members, I will show you how to do two things. One, I'll show you how to exclude the static holidays. Okay. New Year's Day, Juneteenth Day, Independence Day, Veterans Day, Christmas here in the U.S. Right. Those are all on the same day of the month. Right. Christmas is always on December 25th. New Year's Day is always January 1st. Those never change. All right, we can put those right in the code. Then we'll make a holiday table for all of the custom stuff or the floating holidays. President's Day, Memorial Day, Thanksgiving, okay, Easter Sunday, those things, they float around. Or you could put, you know, your custom holidays in there. If you got like a company retreat coming up or something like that, you want to give the, you know, all your staff off, you know, this week in the summer, whatever. Whatever days you don't want to have calculated as work days, We'll cover that in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Gold members get access to the downloads that I make in these classes and the code vault where you can find all the source code for everything I made in all the tech help videos, which is pretty cool. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. 
These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.